Hi, this time we're going to look at the single award science chemistry paper for CS single award. So that's a unit two paper. And this is just a talk through of the answers to the specimen paper that CA provided. So the time for the paper is one hour and the total number of marks is 60. So let's have a look. So question one, shown below are four hazard symbols. Which symbol A, B, C or D would you expect to find on a substance that's explosive? So obviously A would be flammable, B is toxic, C is corrosive and D then is the correct answer. So that is explosive. Which one would you expect to find on a strong acid? So that would be C, which is corrosive. And then in the space below, draw the hazard symbol for caution. So it's just an exclamation mark in that diamond shape. Then state two reasons why symbols are better than words, two label hazards. So the first thing is some, some way of suggesting that they're more eye-catching or they have a greater visual impact. And you could also say that they're understood internationally or that they're easier to read. So any two of those would get you your two marks. Question two, complete the diagram below to show the changes of state. So we've got here solid going to a liquid going to a gas and the other way as well. So going from a gas to a liquid in this direction would be condensing. And then at the bottom here, going from a solid to a liquid in this direction would be melting. One mark for each of those. And then in the space below, complete the diagram to show how the particles are arranged in a solid. And they've given you this grey particle to start you off. So it's just a matter of drawing the same size of particles nice and regularly arranged just to fill up that square. And they should all be touching and they should all be nicely lined up in little rows like that. Question three. The colours of universal indicator at different pH values are shown below. So we've got the colours here. So one is red, three is orange, and so on all the way through yellow, green, blue, green, dark blue and purple up to 13. So use the information uh, given to complete the following table. So you're given sodium hydroxide and purple. So you look up purple on the table and it gives you 13 for the pH. Sodium chloride then is seven. We look up seven and it's green. Hydrochloric acid, uh, then you should know is a strong acid, so it's going to be one and red. Name a more accurate method uh, to measure the pH of a chemical. So any of these, you could have a pH probe, you could have a pH meter, or you could have a data logger. Then complete the sentences about sodium chloride. Choose from solute, solution, solvent and soluble. So when it says choose from, you have to use one of those words. Sodium chloride is, most, is more commonly known as salt. It dissolves easily in water. Salt is described as the solute, that's the part that does the dissolving. And the water can be described as the solvent, that's the liquid that allows the solute to dissolve. So together the salt in the water is described as a solution. So three marks for that. Next, it says salt can be separated from seawater by the process of evaporation. So in the space below, draw a labelled diagram of the apparatus needed to separate salt from a sample of seawater. So what I've got here is I have an evaporating basin sitting on top of a gauze on a tripod and then there's a Bunsen burner underneath. Now, you could draw the whole Bunsen burner, but I tend to just uh, do this because it's much simpler and it's accepted it's heat with a big arrow above it so the way that was marked each piece of apparatus which was drawn correctly would be one mark to a maximum of three and then if you had at least three correct labels on the apparatus that was your fourth mark there so four marks for that question next number four a student investigated the different colored dyes used to make a black food coloring the student did an experiment which involved uh, placing a sample of the color of the coloring onto a filter paper and dipping it into water. The results are shown below. And you see here we've got different spots. There's blue, red and yellow. And then the baseline with the sort of the imprint of where the original spot would have been. So what name is given to this type of separation? Straight away, chromatography. Suggest why the baseline is drawn in pencil. Well, you don't want it to dissolve or to interfere with the results. So either of those would be acceptable. Then how many different dyes were present in the colouring? You're looking for the total number of spots, which is three. And then which dye was the most soluble? It's the one that travels the furthest away, which was blue. Question five, this one's about the periodic table. 
The diagram shows the outline of the periodic table. A, B, C, D and E represents elements from the periodic table. You may find your data leaflet helpful. So if it says you may find your data leaflet helpful, helpful, take the data leaflet out, open it up and look at it because you're going to be able to answer the questions using it. So which one, A, B, C, D or E is potassium? Well, potassium is here and you can find it on your periodic table. You should know it's in group one and it's E. Which one is a noble gas? It has to be in this column here, so that is C. And then the same group is chlorine, so if you're not sure what group chlorine is, again, use your data leaflet, look it up. But it's group seven, so that is D. Complete the sentences by circling the correct answer. Lithium and sodium are both, well, they're both metals. The only one there which is a metal is the alkali metals. Noble gases are group eight and halogens are group seven, so neither of those is correct. The correct symbol for sodium chloride is NaCl. So sodium is group one, chlorine is group seven. They react in a one to one ratio, so it's NaCl. And then the modern periodic table was developed by Mendeleev. Einstein had nothing to do with it and Newlands was instrumental in the development, but Mendeleev gave us the closest to the version we use now. So C, complete the table that gives some information about gases that can be found in the periodic table. Again, you can use your data leaflet for this. So you don't need to know them off the top of your head. You never have to learn the periodic table because you're always given it. So the symbol F is for fluorine, argon has the symbol R, and Xe is xeno. And again, you look those up. You shouldn't have to learn anything like that from the periodic table. It's all given to you. So number six, a scientist added different metals to water. <clears throat> the, results are collect the results collected are shown below. So we've got three different metals, I've just called them one, two and three. The time taken to react with water and then the observation. So one had no flame but bubbles. Um, two had a lilac flame and bubbles. And three had yellow sparks and bubbles. So use the information and your knowledge to answer the following questions. And again, you may find your data leaflet useful. So open the flipping thing and use it. Suggest one way that the scientists could make this a fair test. Well, a fair test is about keeping things the same. So the same amount of metal or the same volume of water, either of those. How would the scientists know that the reaction had finished? Well, each of these, it says there are bubbles up here. So if there are no more bubbles, you know the reaction is finished. And you could also word that as the gas. No more gas has been given off. Or you could say the metal had disappeared. Number three, place the metals in order of reactivity with the most reactive first so we're looking at the times here so the most reactive is the fastest which is number two there then the next one is number three at 35 and then number one was quite slow at 65 now all three of those would give you your two marks but if you had any two in the correct order you got one mark and then suggest the name of metal two the clue is up here it's a lilac flame, so you would suggest that it's potassium. Number seven, the table gives information about different metals. So we've got them, the, sorry, about different materials. And then, so we have the material with polythene, uh, carbon reinforced plastic, nylon and Kevlar. And then it tells you their strength, their relative heaviness, their relative cost and their relative flexibility. So relative just means comparing them to each other, okay? So explain why a company would choose polythene to make plastic bags. So if we look at polythene here, it's the top one. Uh, <clears throat> quite low strength, but its uh, cost is low and it's flexible. So the reason flexible is cheap and also it's light. Now that's, uh, yeah, there for relative heaviness, 960, compared to the others are all above 1,000. So then, so just one mark for picking one of those. Um, and then your second mark is for the correct explanation. So like, for example, saying it's light, so the bag doesn't add to the weight being carried. So any sensible explanation would get you your mark. Then a company has a contract to make uh, climbing ropes. Suggest which material they should use and explain your answer. So you want something which is flexible and also strong. And nylon is the only one that fits those two criteria. So it's strong and it's flexible. If you look at Kevlar, Kevlar here is uh, 
it's really really strong but it's not flexible at all so that's absolutely useless for a rope and the carbon reinforced plastic again is strong but its flexibility is even worse so and it's extremely expensive so again not really suitable for a rope so next question a student carried out tests on three gases the results are shown below we've got x y and z all colorless x turns uh, lime water milky uh, y burns brighter with a lighted splint and z burns with a squeaky pop so which one could be hydrogen give one piece of evidence for your answer so two marks here one for which gas <clears throat> and one for your evidence so z is the correct answer and the reason is because it burns with a squeaky pop now you can't just say squeaky pop you have to say it burns with a squeaky pop to get your two marks and then B, the student suspects that gas Y is oxygen. So describe the test that would be used to confirm that it's oxygen. So in here, they've just said it burns brighter. The test for oxygen, as you know, is it relights a glowing splint. And one mark for each of those parts of the answer. Now, this is about hydrocarbons. So ethane C2H6 is a hydrocarbon. What family of hydrocarbons does it belong to? So that's alkanes because it ends in ane. Then in this space below draw the structure of ethane. So ethane, meth, eth means two carbons. So one, two carbons and then you're just filling the spaces in around each carbon so that each one has four bonds and that's what you end up with here. And describe the combustion of ethane. Your answer should include the definition of a hydrocarbon, the names of the products formed and the impact of combustion on the environment. And then it's one of these in this question you'll be assessed on your written communication skills, uh, including the use of specialist scientific terms. So the first part here, definition of a hydrocarbon, it's a hydrocarbon contains only hydrogen and carbon. Second part, names of the products formed. So the products formed are carbon dioxide and water. And then uh, the impact of the combustion on the environment is that carbon dioxide is given off and it adds to the greenhouse effect, or you could say to global warming, and then any consequence of global warming, like the ice caps melting, like more extreme, extreme weather events, and sea levels rising, all those sorts of things. So the way this is marked, There'll be one mark for each of the points I'm indicating here. So the first bit, the definition of the hydrocarbon, then the two products, then the idea that the carbon dioxide is linked to the greenhouse effect and one other uh, consequence. So when it was marked, five to six would put you into the six mark bracket. Now you would get those six marks if you're using clear English and you know a good structure of your answer. Three to four would get you into the four mark bracket. And again, the, the spelling and grammar mark brings you up to the four. And one to two would put you into that two mark category. And finally here, we're on to uh, the last question, which is about rate. So uh, the graph below shows the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere since 1700. And it, use the information in the graph above to complete the table. So you can see I've just drawn lines at each one to get me, you know, to, to figure out which it is. So at 1800, 0 0.028, 1850, 0 0.029, 1900, 0 0.030, and at 1950, 0.032. <clears throat> now describe fully the trend in the graph. So what you would need to say is that it increases uh, from 1800 uh, and it increases, um, oops, sorry, I'm having to write this in, and then more quickly. from sort of uh, 1900. And the other thing that you needed to say, I should have said this at the beginning, was um, you see this portion of the graph here is flat, so no increase uh, from 1700 to 1800. 
And for those of you who complain about my writing, you can see why I do this in advance, because my writing's even worse if I'm trying to do it here. So no increase from 17 to 1800, and then an increase from 1800. Then predict the percentage of carbon dioxide that'll be in the atmosphere in 2050. So you're basically trying to draw that graph on up. So anywhere um, above uh, 0.04. Okay, so that is all of the foundation tier. Um, I'm going to do the higher tier as well if you'd like to take a look at that too. Thanks for watching.